Okay, uh, greetings. Uh, so let's get started with uh, today's class. So a quick recap of what we did in the previous class. You know, like we are looking at uh, the uh, components of the powertrain, and uh, we saw that you know, like uh, what were the typical power speed and torque speed characteristics of IC engines, and what is ideally required from a prime mover, and uh, why the IC engine uh, does not meet the ideal traction requirements and hence one requires a multi-speed uh, gearbox you know like to match what the IC engine provides to what the vehicle would require. So that is where uh, uh, we stopped yesterday. So and one more uh, important uh, requirement of an automotive powertrain is that like uh, the uh, powertrain should enable the vehicle to move from rest and since a typical IC engine delivers, uh, delivers very little torque at uh, low speeds, we typically require what is called as a move off element to enable the vehicle to be uh, moved off from rest. Okay? So that is what we are going to look at uh, today. So before we uh, start discussion on the so called move off element uh, which typically in most uh, <coughs> transmissions that we encounter you know, like uh, uh, is realized as a clutch. Okay? So we will uh, look at uh, uh, how the different components are uh, uh, arranged in a vehicle. So let us say you know like we have a vehicle where the engine is mounted in the front. This is uh, uh, essentially called as a longitudinal orientation of the engine because you can see that the axis of the crankshaft is along the longitudinal axis of the vehicle. Okay? So in other layouts you can one can also have a transverse uh, orientation of an engine where the axis of the crankshaft is going to be perpendicular to the longitudinal axis when looked at looked at it from the top. Okay? So that is another orientation of the engine. In this particular uh, schematic, one can see that uh, the engine is mounted longitudinally and the output of the engine is connected to what is called as a clutch and the clutch transmits the energy to the gearbox and the gearbox transmits the uh, uh, torque to a final drive through a, a propeller shaft and this differential unit distributes the uh, uh, talk to the two driven wheels. So these are the driven wheels in this particular case. Okay. So one could uh, this this is essentially what is called as a front engine mounted rear wheel drive. So this configuration is what is called as a front engine mounted rear wheel drive. So uh, the, the meaning is obvious from the term because the engine is mounted in the front and the rear wheels are the ones which are driven. Okay? So this is uh, quite popular in uh, trucks and buses right? and uh, even some light commercial vehicles. In most passenger cars today, you know, we would see that the engine is mounted in the front and the front wheels are the ones which are driven. Then what happens is that like typically the engine is mounted in a transverse fashion that is the crankshaft is going to be perpendicular to the axis of the crankshaft is going to be perpendicular to the longitudinal axis and the gearbox is mounted close to the engine, the clutch and the gearbox. Okay? So we look at that configuration also later on. So that is what is called as a transverse uh, layout and typically uh, we will also observe that uh, when we have this front engine mounted front wheel drive, we have what is called as a transaxle gearbox where the gearbox and the final drive are integrated as one. And uh, typically when we have a rear engine mounted rear wheel drive also, we may have a similar configuration arrangement. 
okay, of the primary gearbox and the final drive. Okay. So, these are all different uh, layouts of the uh, powertrain which are typically used. Okay. So, this is front engine mounted rear wheel drive, we can have front engine mounted front wheel drive, we can have rear engine mounted rear wheel drive. Okay. So, those are all like uh, popular configurations of the drives okay, in automotive powertrains currently. Okay. So, but the typical components are the prime mover, the clutch, the gearbox, the final drive. Okay. So, th those remain the same. The way they are uh, oriented and mounted and integrated may have some small differences depending on the configuration. So, now what does this uh, move off element do? So, suppose imagine a scenario where the engine is idling and our car is stopped at a signal and we want to essentially move the car from rest. What do we do? We uh, engage uh, the first gear and then slowly leave the clutch pedal while slowly pressing the accelerator pedal, right. So, that is what we do. Now, in fact, when the clutch pedal is pressed, the clutch is disengaged, okay. So, the operation is uh, counterintuitive. So, when, when we are depressing the clutch pedal, we will shortly see that the clutch is in fact disengaged from the engine flywheel, okay. So, when we are engaging the clutch by slowly releasing the clutch pedal, the, the wheels and the gearbox shaft and the clutch are going to be at rest initially, right, while the engine is going to be rotating at some speed, correct, some non-zero speed. So, there is a speed differential between the two and that needs to be overcome, okay. And it needs to be overcome in such a way that the engine is not suddenly loaded because the engine cannot provide so much of torque at low speeds. So, there should be a smooth transfer of torque to start the vehicle while ensuring that after some time all the components are rotating as one in synchronization, right. So, that is an important requirement. So, if you want to visualize what happens, let us say the engine is initially rotating at some speed omega 1 o. So, this is the engine speed and let us say the input shaft to the gearbox is rotating is at some speed omega 2 o. It can be stationary also, omega 2 o can be 0 also, right. So, there is a speed differential when the clutch is disengaged. So, in this phase, the clutch is disengaged. So, one can immediately see that the clutch serves as a link between the engine and the gearbox, right. So, that is one of the primary roles of the uh, clutch, okay. So, now when we start uh, removing the uh, force from the clutch pedal, we are engaging the clutch. So, what happens is the following, this engine speed starts to decrease because of the load coming on the engine flywheel while the speed of the input shaft of the gearbox starts to increase, right. <coughs> and at some point the speed differential is overcome, okay, almost. So, this is the phase where the clutch is getting engaged, okay. So, this is the engaging phase and this is the period over which there is some slip okay, between the two elements. Okay. After that, once this happens, these two start rotating as one unit. Okay. <coughs> if you look at the uh, 
uh, engine's output shaft and the gearbox input shaft is concerned. Okay, so this is a typical visualization of how there exists an initial speed differential, and once the clutch is engaged, the uh, essentially there is a slip, but with as time progresses, you know, like that slip is overcome, and then essentially uh, the uh, engine uh, output shaft and the uh, gearbox input shaft start rotating as one after some time. Okay, so <coughs> we are going to see how this is, these are realized in practice. Uh, so before. we look at uh, their construction and realization. So, this moving of element broadly it can be classified as a, a frictional device or a frictional clutch. So, frictional clutches are further subdivided into what are called as dry clutch and wet clutches and uh, this moving of elements can also be hydrodynamic in nature. So, a common hydrodynamic moving of element is what is called as a torque converter which is uh, widely used in automatic transmissions. Okay. So, we would be focusing on dry clutches which are very commonly used in uh, manual uh, transmissions. Okay. So, that is what we are going to uh, look at. Okay. So, what are the functions of these clutches? So, we will look at uh, dry clutch. Okay. So, what are the functions uh, of a <coughs> dry clutch? So, the first function is that it provides a link between the prime mover and the transmission. Okay, so, that is very important. Then the clutch should allow for a smooth take up of drive when the vehicle is moved from rest. Okay. Also, it should allow for a brief uh, disengagement between engine and gearbox when gear change is done. Okay. So, these are typical expectations of this uh, clutch. Okay. So, so, if we look at clutch action per se, what happens is that is the following. So, uh, as we are discussing a friction clutch, so the flywheel which comes out of the engine is rotating along with the engine uh, crankshaft. And the so called clutch plate which we are going to look at uh, shortly is connected to the uh, input shaft to the gearbox. When let us say the vehicle is at rest and the engine is rotating at some non-zero speed, when the clutch is going to be engaged this clutch plate is pushed against the flywheel and there is a speed differential and due to friction okay, the speed differential is overcome and the torque is transmitted from the flywheel to the clutch plate and they start rotating as uh, 
one. Okay, that's why it's called as a friction clutch. Okay, so what are the typical components of a dry clutch? <coughs> so the main component is what is called as a clutch plate. So the clutch plate is pushed against the flywheel by what is called as a pressure plate, okay, a pressure plate assembly. So this pressure plate is the component which pushes the uh, clutch plate, you know, like against the flywheel and when we want to disengage and engage the uh, clutch, we, it happens through a mechanism that ultimately uses what is called as a clutch fork and a release bearing, you know, to do this action and all these components are housed in a clutched clutch housing. Okay, so the, these are the main components. Okay, so <coughs> so let's look at uh, what happens these uh, components. Various uh, components of a clutch. So this is a, just a, a schematic to just show the clutch operation so uh, we will look at each component in uh, detail typically what happens is that like when uh, the uh, clutch is engaged you can see this uh, clutch plate this uh, th this of course is a very simple schematic right so this red element which is the clutch plate, this is the flywheel and this element is the pressure plate. <coughs> so when the clutch is engaged that means we are not pressing the clutch pedal. So the clutch plate is pressed against the flywheel with the pressure plate and this clutch plate is mounted on this gearbox input shaft. So the flywheel is rotating along with the engine. So what is going to happen when the clutch plate is pushed against the flywheel by the pressure plate after some initial slip, the clutch plate and the flywheel and the pressure plate are going to rotate as one unit, right? And the energy is transmitted from the engine through the flywheel, through the clutch plate, through the input shaft to the gearbox to the transmission and further downstream right in the powertrain. So that is how the energy transfer happens when the clutch is engaged. So now <coughs> when the clutch is disengaged what happens? So we can immediately see that when the clutch is disengaged or in other words the clutch pedal is now pressed. When the clutch pedal is pressed what happens is that there is a force this is the release bearing. And this is the clutch fork. Okay. So when the clutch is uh, what is a clutch pedal is pressed, what happens is that a force is applied by the release bearing on what are called uh, what is called as a diaphragm spring. We look at what this is shortly. There's a spring called diaphragm spring on the pressure plate. This is the pressure plate. So when this force is applied in this direction, so you can see that the force is applied in this direction, 
this end of the diaphragm spring moves to the right in this diagram ok. So, it moves the pressure plate assembly to the right. So, when the pressure plate assembly moves to the right the force which holds the clutch plate against the flywheel is released. So, you can immediately see that the contact between the clutch plate and the flywheel and the pressure plate is broken. So, the link between the engine and the gearbox is now broken ok that is what happens when the clutch pedal is pressed. Please remember when the clutch pedal is pressed the clutch is disengaged ok. Now, if I release the clutch pedal the exact uh, opposite sequence of operations happen. So, what happens is this force is released now <coughs> the diaphragm spring will move like this it will push the pressure plate to the left and then the clutch plate will be pushed against the flywheel and the motion will be transmitted to the gearbox ok. So, that is what happens in this uh, friction clutch right ok. So, these are the various components you know and this is how the uh, friction clutch uh, works. So, let us look at each and every component and we will observe how they uh, contribute.